In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, of course, my brothers and sisters, is the third Sunday of Lent. And today, in all Orthodox churches all over the world, in every country, every continent, in all Orthodox churches today, a special service is being held, a beautiful service, the veneration of the Holy Cross. A procession will be held, altar boys, servers, subdeacons, the priests will carry a tray of beautiful flowers around the church, and on that tray will be laid the precious cross of our Savior. It's a beautiful service, without a doubt. Very meaningful, very powerful. But the question we ask ourselves today is, why are we having this service? What is the meaning of it? What is the need for it? Why is the cross going to be raised high? Why are we going to venerate the precious cross of our Lord? So the church offers us an opportunity today at the midpoint of Lent. Today is the middle of Lent. And so the church offers us an opportunity at this midpoint to give us the strength and the power to continue our Lenten preparation to celebrate the glorious resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today, my, my good friends, my brothers and sisters, we need to make, take another good look at the cross of Christ. We need to look at its symbol in order to get at its true meaning, and by doing so to find the true meaning of our lives. When we find the true meaning of the cross, we find the true meaning of our lives. Today, people are going to all kinds of extremes, all kinds of measures, extremes of time, in order to find enjoyment of life, to find pleasure in life, as if this life of ours on this earth is the only one that counts. How many people today, how many people do you know today who are spending their lives running here and there and everywhere looking for a little pleasure here, a little fun there, success, that's the big thing, <clears throat> success. And why are we doing it? That we're doing it so often in order to hide our fears, hide away from our insecurities, our anxieties, trying to avoid pain and suffering as if it's possible to avoid pain, some pain and suffering in this life. We have to be ready. All of us have to be ready to face some suffering and some pain in our lives because they're part of life too. They're part of life. These are the experiences that make us strong and able to face anything that life offers us. Can you imagine if the cross of Christ had never happened? What if he had not been crucified? What if he had run away from the Garden of Gethsemane? What if he was, he didn't go through the passion and the sufferings? What if he said no to his father, no, 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 I don't want to be crucified? But thank God, thank God, he died on the cross and by dying and be, being resurrected again, he gave to all of us the power to live as God's children. Jesus said very clearly, I mean, did we read that book or not? Jesus said very clearly, if you want to follow me, are you serious? Do you want to follow me? Then you've got to deny yourself and pick up your cross and follow after me. 
He never promised an easy life. He never said that if you follow me and you become a Christian, you're going to have a, an easy, wonderful life. Never have to worry about it ever again. There is no easy life for anybody and especially for those of us who call ourselves Christians. There is no easy life. If you have not understood that, I beg of you to understand it now. These days, go down to Barnes & Noble, shelves, sections filled of success books, success books, positive thinking books, all kinds of ways to be rich, to be successful, guarantee happiness. Those books are there. Norman Vincent Peale, he died a long time ago, but his books are still being sold. And people are still talking about Norman Vincent Peale and his incorrect understanding of what positive thinking really means. He didn't even understand it himself. All kinds of magazines, all kinds of pseudo-religious groups that promise their members and followers riches. There is a church right now in Texas, you probably have heard about it, the pastor down there, he's, he's writing books. It's the prosperity gospel he preaches. <laughs> prosperity gospel. It's a so-called Christian church. And he has 12,000 people attending his church. They have to go and rent a stadium to welcome those thousands of people who want to come and hear from their minister how they can get rich if they follow Jesus. Can you understand that? Can you believe that? It's happening right now. He's writing books. And our gullible people, I wonder if there are even some former Orthodox that go to that place. I hope not. So they say, if you follow me, if you follow what I say to you every Sunday, you follow my methods, read the books I'm writing for you, then you're going to be a success. Don't worry about it. You're going to have an easy life. Well, there's no such thing. Even though people may be following, <coughs> following it and falling for it, there is no simple and easy life. Happiness and success come from hard work. Hard work, you know that by now. All of you have worked hard in your lives, I know that. Success and happiness comes from hard work. And there will be some pain and some suffering along the way because that is <coughs> part of life too. Any kind, any other kind of happiness is shallow, fragile, and is going to disappear. Jesus said it quickly. He said it. Some of us just don't want to read that part of the Bible. Jesus said, my brother, my sister, if you're living in this world, you're going to have some tribulation. You remember that quotation? You will have some suffering, he said, just as I have had suffering, and you will overcome it, just as I have overcome it. So the cross that we have in our churches, the cross that you're wearing right around your, your, your neck right now, is a symbol of Christ's suffering and of his victory. That's what it reminds us of when we wear that cross. It reminds us of our suffering and our eventual victory as well. Now sometimes the cross may seem heavy. People come to me, Father Nick, what's going on here? Why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? What did I do? Well, maybe you didn't do anything. But that's part of life. That is part of everyone's life, whether we realize it or not. 
There's an old story, maybe you've read that story about this beautiful elderly man. He had a dream, he had a vision, an angel came to him and said to him, Harold, there's a pile of crosses right there, pick any one you want. So Harold went over to the pile and he picked the smallest one. He picked the lightest one. Okay? And what do you know? He picked exactly the cross that he would have gotten anyway. So we are never burdened. We are never tempted more than we can handle. My brothers and sisters, there's no other way. There's no easy way for any of us. There isn't any easy way. That's what the cross today reminds us of. It reminds us of that point. Okay? The only way that there is, is through prayer, faith, God, get me through this. One day after the other. Only in that way, surrendering to God, believing in God, and talking to God every day, are we going to find a measure of true happiness and success in this life? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.